I think we're live. <sighs> now blindfolded. Where the hell am I? <laughs> What's up? How you doing? How you been? Who do we got? Johnny, Dennis, Michael, Joe, Andrew, Sean, Wendell, Vems, Ben, <laughs> and of course, uh, Ogre Lord, Frank C, Zach H, Yeti Matsi, Andrew Stet, CPO, Rob M, Fern, John Gregory. I can, I can hear something. Something's up. This goddamn mic. Check. Yeah, a little better. It gets it gets a little gets a little touchy, a little bit. <laughs> Dave, Dennis, Joe, speaker, what's up, buddy? The speaker will be prominently featured, but not really, in this week's episode. Got uh, Matt, got a guitar, Sean, and David, and Dennis, and Vimps and Gary Devlin, what's up, buddy? We got B Man. We got uh, James, we got Cushman, Jimmy Ray, Sammy Ray, Strat Tom Ray, <laughs> Super Lead, what kind of lead? Super, super Lead, Rico B, and uh, there you go. And uh, Frank, yeah, it's rubbing. I, I know. I could hear it, Frank. It, it was. It, it, it's angering me. What's up, funny ass guitar guy? Judge Shred, Nelson Rodriguez. What's up, buddy? John says it sounds great, and I believe him. Spent an afternoon hanging with Doug Strong today. Look at you. Yeah, we need the Vola cam. It's cam two. It's Stoner Shark. What's up, bro? You, you're swimming through the water, bro. So cool, bro. <laughs> Exactly, blue trees, purple clovers, orange diamonds, something like that. And green clovers. Jackie Stoney got the blues. I haven't played a ton of guitar this week, so it feels good to play guitar. You know? It's, uh... Plus, I love this Vola. Yeah, do I have to hit the gate? I might have to. I had it off. You're right. Here. Kind of need it. That's probably pretty good. 
Maybe a little less. I get a little more sensitive, you know. I'm a very sensitive person. What's up, Ron? What's up, Coots? Star Guitar Works. I do, I do like this Volar a lot, you know. <clears throat> what gate setting do you use on THU? You know, I, I like, to, I, I don't like to really be um, much lower than in the 70s. Uh, I'm usually working, I, I think it starts, what does it start about, 79? Off, yeah, about 79. Fine on the humbucker. Not quite so much on the single. And so, th there it is around 71. I, I don't know that I like to go too much below 70, 71. I feel like ju it just gets too choppy. Well, I, I, I don't like it. Even now, it's a compressed, it's a compressor gate, right? It's almost like a side chain. plan to ever use a real amp on, uh, on the stream. There are no current plans to ever, 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 ever use an amp in a live stream. But if I would, which amp would you, re which amp brand would you recommend? Black Star? But, um, you know, I, I do it for the same reason that everybody in pretty much the industry is moving digital. It sounds better. A Bugatta? I know, we're, we're going to see cats tonight. It doesn't get dark for like almost another hour. <laughs> You recommend the tiny uh, orange amp behind me? It's funny you say that. I'm actually running through that right now. What do you think? Hold on, let me let, let me set it to a crunch tone. No, no, but wait. I'll go back to the lead. It's pretty good though, you gotta admit. For, for such a small amp, it sounds amazing. April Fools and May. No, that, that's that's been a running joke for about what two years now. Yeah, yeah, I'm running through the orange. Exactly. That orange jam does more than swim in beer. <laughs> After an illustrious swimming career, uh, it's more than just a product placement prop. <laughs> Is 
where the gate's killing me a little bit. All right. Well, there we go. Now I can look at the... Here we go. <laughs> now I can look up. What's up, Surf B in Boston? N nice, nice weather we're having, ain't it? Oh, good, good day to work on Milan. Like the sound of that vanilla slice. So, you know, it's it, 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 it's it's a tone. People tell me it's good, and I believe them. What's up, I Roxy Blues? Too damn hot. Yeah, when we where we were kind of hot today. We hit about eighty, low eighties today. But um, it's a dry heat, so you don't really care. Uh, tomorrow we're going to hit about ninety, but again, it's going to be kind of a dry heat. So it's not going to feel quite so bad. And uh, then I think we're cooling off. It's crashing down from, from Monday and Tuesday. It's going to drop by 20 degrees in the night. And it's so friggin' dry, there won't be any, um, there won't be any uh, rain, you know, associated with it as far as I know. Just, there's, not, there's nothing in the air to ring out. No AC in the window yet, but dang close. We, we're thinking that our AC is probably going to go on tomorrow because um, even if it's dry, this house just heats up like a friggin' oven. So I, I suspect we'll want to turn the, you know, the air conditioner on. If it's going to be 90, uh, at least, at the very least, um, pump it all up to the second floor. Yeah, because we have two zones. Um, just pump everything through the second floor, and they, they usually good enough, you know. Unless it's really crazy, then I'll turn both zones on. Sixty-seven, but kind of muggy. Yeah, see, I don't like um, I don't like the muggy. And we swim in it. We have the muggy around here big time. God, freaking muggy air. Pretty much, show, it's going to be showing up soon, next few weeks. Then it won't leave until like mid-September. You know. When I was in Germany, um, on one of the trips, it was in very late June, like last week in June, first week of July. That's pretty much the peak of summer. And the day I got there, man, it was super muggy, kind of rare. So muggy, like the train had to stop and cool down for a little bit because it's not used to traveling in that kind of heat. And um, but we made it, and uh, the next day was sort of like a transition day, felt cooler, a little more overcast. The day after that, it was like today, like 80 degrees and a dew point of like 35. And this is in July, <laughs> and I'm like, oh my god, I could. Now, this is a summer I could live with. 80, 85 degrees and a dew point in the mid-30s? Oh, my God. That's friggin' awesome. I love it. But what you realize is that if you look at where I was, like, on a map, it's actually really far north. It's actually, like, way up in Canada. But due to the ocean currents, uh, that area just stays relatively warmer than, like, eastern Canada or, you know, central Canada. Humid does suck, man. Jackie, don't mug me, bro. Germany is surprisingly warm, but it's a. It can be, um, 
It can be not quite as humid as we get around here. The humidity that we get with the, just the water vapor in the air is so great. You know, humans cool off by um, evaporation. You perspire. That puts a coat of water on the exterior of your skin, which is supposed to evaporate. And as the water evaporates, it carries away some of the heat with it and cools you off. But when the dew point is like 70, 72, there's no evaporation going on. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> and uh, it's just like grotesquely friggin' hot and you just sit there in your own sweat like constantly. There's no drying off. It's just sweat after sweat, just constant sweat. Um, so, you know, that's why it, even the heat when you're in, like, I, you know, a buddy of mine went to a wedding. He goes, you know, we're in a wedding because we're outside of Vegas. We're in the desert. It's a beautiful wedding. They have it all set up. He goes, he goes they're telling me it's 105 degrees. Goes, but it wasn't that bad because the dew point was, like, 15. <laughs> He's like, you know, it's so freaking dry because you don't even notice it. Goes, it's dangerous because, you know, it, you don't even notice it. You got to hydrate, like, you know, like crazy. But um, I'd, I'd take that over the disgusting, muggy air that we get that's, uh, you know, just filled with the dank and the, and the bugs. It brings out a lot of bugs. Get a lot of bugs in the muggy air. Exactly, none. None more evaporation. Yeah, we can get, we can get like 88 and like, uh, 67 percent humidity 70 percent humidity you walk outside it's like you stepped into somebody's mouth <laughs> yeah florida is florida is really bad like you know who's, you know it's you know what is surprisingly cow cat that's a rare sighting right there people that's a cow cat um you know what's surprisingly muggy if you've ever spent some time there? Washington, D.C. Holy Christ. Very, very muggy. That whole area in the summer. I had to go there when I was working at uh, Putnam Hills and Bartlett. <laughs> and uh, I had to go, uh, I had to go down there and do some IT work. And God, it was just, it was just gross. Friggin' gross. What's up, Tom King? <clears throat> oh, did you spray? Oh my God, dude. I sprayed the Bifin today too. What's up? What's up, my Bifin bro? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had to pull out the big guy. I saw an ant. I'm like, what? What is this ant on my property? <laughs> you must die! Quickly mix up a formula of every pesticide known to man. Triple it. Oh my God, dude, the bifin. But you know what? See, it's easier to get in your state. It's getting harder to get in my state. You can't get any more on Amazon? Yeah, no, they won't carry it any longer. They won't carry it. That, fa that falls into the danger. Warning, warning, this stuff will kill you. <laughs> Yeah, no, the bifin is, uh, no, it's quite tangy. <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll, that'll wake you right up. <clears throat> because it's, um, because it's banned in too many states, uh, TK. And they don't want to have to deal with the logistics of going, well, I can ship to this state, but I can't ship to that state. And what would happen was that Amazon wouldn't ship it to your state, but some third party would. And so it got to like a little lawlessness. If you still want it, I think eBay, there's plenty of people on eBay perfectly willing to throw a bottle in a box and send it your way. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a, that is a rare cat. That is a, that's an extremely rare cat. She's already disappeared. <laughs> Joe Hervey put hair on your chest. It's funny you should mention that. 
it uses a petroleum aromatic as the vehicle, which is basically naphtha. But it's like a certain like version of the oil that is designed to mix with water. You got to remember, you're taking an oil and you're mixing with with water. And then what happens is that it dries, and the oil dries to a crystal, and that's what the that's what the pesticide is. But it's it's an oil is the vehicle for the uh, you know for the pesticide, and um, but because it uses this special oil, this like highly dangerous oil. It's got the the highest and most dangerous rating for inhalation. And the graphic is a man's chest exploding. Just probably just gonna say that's probably not good. And it's so dangerous that if you swallow it, the note to physician says um aspirate them so you're going to get a you're going to be aspirated before they go fully aspirate them with a full tube into your friggin lungs before you pump before you remove the contents of their stomach just to be sure that they don't accidentally um inhale some of this formula like note to physician aspirate before like gastro something it's like some term for basically emptying your stomach it's uh it's vicious but you know it talking was so funny the other day my my neighbor uh said to me he's new to the neighborhood and i was talking to him and he goes you know the one thing about you know this area he goes i know what it is but there's like no bugs he goes we went to like a friend of mine's house we were getting killed by mosquitoes because we go up back here he goes like nothing i go oh yeah not noticing a lot of bugs are we <laughs> Yeah, maybe it's because I lay down like five gallons a month of like five different flavors of the most hideous insect death on the planet. Get off my property! <laughs> God, it's uh, no, it's it's it, it's a uh, it's an addiction. I'm I'm addicted to uh, spraying for bugs. <laughs> The, um, the, the, the reality is, is that if you let your guard, it's like sweeping back the ocean. If you let your guard down for even a second, you're overrun with ants. You're overrun with, uh, um, wasps. My house seems to be a magnet for them, especially, um, wasps. Like we really get them out of control. In fact, so out of control that twice I had a call and have people come in to get rid of them. Never again, though. It's spraying the same stuff I have now. So it's like, what am I, why am I calling you for? You know? You don't have bugs where you are for real, yeah. Bifin may cause headaches, nausea, cans, and organ failure, removal of limbs, erectile dysfunction. Oh, yeah. Well, I wouldn't recommend drinking it. <laughs> I mean, if wasps kill ants, well, so do I, and, and probably in much greater numbers. <laughs> well, you know, you're right, Vanilla Slice. We do, we need the bees, so you got to be real careful about where you spray. So like right now, I won't I won't spray on like um, anything that's flowering. Like so that's rule number one. You can't spray any flowers, right? Um, and I generally stay away from the vegetation until like late summer, because by late summer you really don't really see any bees. It's mostly wasps, you know, and they're pretty aggressive too. Um, so. Uh, so right now, I, I don't really spray the vegetation. I spray, like, my foundation, the side of my garage, the fencing, you know, the a strip, like, along the driveway. Any active ant, you know, or bee, uh, not bee, but wasp nests. Basement pool looks nice and dry. You know what? 
we had quite a bit of rain recently. Two two events. One was 2.6 inches of rain. And the other was like 1.8 inches of rain. And uh, both times, you know, it was pretty much under control with the sump pump. Now, I don't want to say that it's over because I, I can't ever say that. Uh, every time I say that, I, I get... Last time I've said that, I said, oh, this new pump, this will do it. You know, it won't happen again. Right away, it will flood it again. But I will say this pump that I have now is shorter and it's stronger, right? It's, it's a little, little tank, little beast, right? Three-quarter horsepower. And, um, and it just triggers more quickly because it's just shorter. It's just literally just smaller. And uh, so far... It's been pretty good. We'll see. I mean, eventually we're going to get some crazy, like, four to five inches of rain. Or we're going to get a long rain event, right? We're going to get an inch, then, like, nothing, then, like, one or two inches of rain, then, like, nothing. And then we're going to get, like, four inches of rain in the final end. And that would be something that would totally flood my basement, right? Because you're building and building and building. I feel like right now when we've been getting the rain... It's come after a period of, like, excessive drought. And it takes a long time before my sump pump even starts to show water. Which, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I just don't, I don't think it's been tested yet. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I would love it for, to be over. <laughs> because it sucks to have a basement that floods. I, um, I don't have a battery backup, but I do have a generator that I keep at the ready. Uh, what kind of pickups? Uh, so this is, these are just um, the stock Vola pickups, which I think sound pretty nice. They're just standard stock Vola pickups. So let's talk about that for a little bit. We'll, 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 we'll get into the, the topics of the week. Introductions are over, bro. The honeymoon is over. Time to get into the, the meat of the, uh, of the conversation. So let's start out. What do you want to do first? You want to do the SG saga? You want to, you want to go, should we just go right down the, the list? You want to do the, the new Vola stuff? Well, let's, let's start with the SG saga. I think SG is, people, people were sort of curious about that. So, um, as you may remember from last week, we were joy clicking around and looking at guitars, which is something we like to do around here. And um, uh, one thing I noticed is that uh, they had this special SG, literally an SG special. And it was a mod shop. Now, mod shop can mean a lot of things. It can mean new pickup rings and new knobs. But it can also mean a new color, which is a rarer mod. They don't spray new colors. And Gibson sort of figured it out and pulled all the mods that are color mods sort of off of Reverb. Sort of moved them onto like their private website. I mean, why, why let Reverb dip their beak into those? They're gonna sell instantly every time because it's a special modified color from, from Gibson. I, I I don't think they've ever had one that didn't sell out. So the modified colors uh, have have moved from Reverb <laughs> right right over to the to the Gibson site. So it was a modified color, right? So it's like, huh, oh, huh, oh, what? Modified color, and it was a. Um, it could it could still be up there. Let's look. Let's take a look. See. Let's do. Gibson. Mole. And it's there. And there it is. There she blows. Okay. There you go. There it is. There's the guitar. In all its glory. So um, we 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 after the, it's in it's in Coppa. So after we get off the the show, it, it, speakers on the show with us. You know, he texts me. He says, you know, uh, that you know that guitar looked pretty cool, and I, and I liked that it. it's sort of like a one off, right? That it's a one of a kind. So, like, if I was gonna get an SG, you know, that sort of makes it stand out of the crowd. And it might actually have some collectible value, you know, what with being one of a kind and all. And I was like, absolutely. And, you know, the price, 
that's a pretty good price. They just sold um, an SG Special Mod on the Gibson website, twenty ninety nine. Right, that's a bit more. So he says, uh, "I'm buying it." He goes, "And what I'll do is I'll, I'll get it." This is a speaker, of course. The speaker says, "You know what? I'm going to buy it." And what I'll do is, uh, I'll either have a chip to you, or we'll we'll meet up, and you can like show it on the show and all this stuff. But I'm going to get it. I said, "All right." So he tries to get it, and their like checkout system isn't working. It like keeps rejecting. They're like, you know, our system can't process your payment right now. <laughs> it wasn't declined. They're like, we can't process the payment. So he says, uh, all right, I'll, I'll wait till like the morning. Maybe, they, maybe they're working on their systems. It was late. You know, it's late at night on a Saturday night. Maybe they're, maybe they're modif you know, maybe they're doing a little, you know, a little system maintenance. Maybe the middleware is down. So he tries the next morning and he, it, it won't work again. So he says, what the hell? He'll use PayPal, and of course, he's still using the same card through PayPal, and it goes right through, right, instantly. I, again, I think it's a middleware problem. And so, um, they, they, uh, he, he winds up, he, he, um, he buys the guitar. And uh, he says, you know, it's, it, it's going to be shipped. I'm going to have it shipped to the store. And, um, you know, we'll just meet up at the store, and we can, we can check it out. And, uh, you know, see what we think. And I said, you know, that sounds like a plan. And, of course, you know, it takes, he, he buys it on a Sunday. They ship it on a Monday. I don't think it gets to the store till like, Wednesday. And we show up there on, uh, on Friday. In the meantime, in between him ordering it and us going to pick up the guitar, they have a sale. Save 10% in card on any used item, four ninety nine plus. <laughs> they don't have used sales ever. Period. Could have got an extra hundred and twenty nine dollars off of this. So I'm already on the war path. Like when we go to pick this up, it's gonna be like, bitch, I need an extra ten percent off of this deal. I'm gonna return it and buy it again, like right now. Because 129 bucks is 129 bucks. And that's 129 bucks. So they're like, uh, so I'm already like got, you know, putting the war paint on. Before we even go to pick this thing up, I also let me do a little let me do a little, little quick little, little quick something here. Hold on. Um, uh, um, no, son of a bitch. That's the se that's the second time you got me, you bitch. Bad result. That's it. That's it. I got it. I got it. It's trying to elude me, but it couldn't do it. Back to our story. In the meantime, <laughs> now back to our story. Um, in the meantime, you know, being the somewhat of a guitar detective that I am, I started looking it up because it's a one of a kind, meaning that if it ever sold before, we're going to find it because there's one of them. And I did. <laughs> there it is. There's the original guitar on sold on reverb by CDA Guitars in Idaho. Gibson SG Copper Mod Collection Rare, one of a kind. And this is definitely it. It's definitely the same guitar. As a matter of fact, when we were in the store, we compared serial numbers. It was it. This was the guitar. 100% that's the guitar. So you're already feeling pretty good, right? You're saying to yourself, huh, well, you know, $18.99, $12.99. Now, I'm no math magician, but it seems like we have a pretty good savings going on here. Here's the problem. It didn't look like this. It didn't look like this. That's not what it looked like. This, this is what it looked like, the guitar. No case, no mod shop, no certificates, no nothing. This all seemed to evaporate in between it being purchased on Reverb and it showing up on Guitar Center Used. 
And I was uh, telling Speaker, I said, Speaker, if that is your real name, I don't think uh, that, with, I think without the case, without the documentation, without what we would call the provenance, your collectability goes away. Now, it might be just a nice SG, and you might just say, you know what, it's still a kick-ass SG. It is, I know it's one of a kind, and it does say mod right on the back of the headstock, so maybe we'll keep it, but, and Speaker can attest to this, the action was a little high. And, you know, it, it felt like it, it wasn't like the best feeling guitar. Neck was, a you know, um, one of the chunkier slim tapers I've felt. It was not. It was not instilling confidence, and it had some condition issues. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, they're not here, but it had some belt buckles. It's cleaner. It's cleaner when it's sold here, but it had some belt buckling going on in the back. He pointed that right out. He's like, "Oh, dude, it's kind of hacked on the back." First of all, who the fuck wears a belt buckle? All right, and and you know you can't t throw a shirt over the top of that. But, you know, all, all these tiny defects are still there, plus new and improved defects and, 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 and wings and dings and, and scratches on it since then. So, you know, I think in our infinite, um, you know, wisdom, basically with the collectability, you know, kind of gone without having any of the side stuff, we backed out. And by we, I mean speaker. <laughs> and... Um, he, uh, he 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 got a, a full refund and uh, and now it's back up for sale again. So if you want it, it's up there. As a matter of fact, it would be ten percent off. So if you were so inclined to get it, it would be even cheaper. I can tell you right now, the neck looked pretty straight and the action was pretty high. So you're going to have to drop that bar a little bit. And the other thing is, if you read, and this was another thing that sort of killed it because as I'm reading up on this, look at this dummy. Right, Gibson. There's no other Gibson in this color out there. Blah blah blah. This guitar has had a few modifications since I got it from Gibson. Why? Why would you do that? You have a one of a kind. Any mods, mods by Gibson, gold. Got mods by you, uh, not not so much. <laughs> Lead. First, the knobs were changed to reflectors, thought they looked better. Okay, but you kept the original knobs. Oh, the original knobs in the bag will be included. Okay, well, that's not too bad, right? You changed the knobs and you kept the knobs. That's fine. Second, I thought the stock pickup sounded weak. Oh, see, here we go. And I put in wolf tone, mean P90s and meaner P90s. Now it sounds fa fantastic. It's like, well, it says you... And if you don't have the original pickups, as I was telling speaker, you know, it's going to cost you like 250 bucks to put a new set of, to go back to the original P90s in this thing, or you're going to have a modded Gibson mod. That's another thing that I thought really hurt its value, is I'm reading this guy's ad, and I'm basically saying, why, why can't you just leave it alone, right? What did what, I tell you, speaker? He pet it to death. <laughs> right? You get something, you just right. You got the, you got your new, you got your new uh, little pet duck for Easter, and you and you and you literally pet it to death. Wolf tone pickups are pretty good. No one's. I'm not saying that at all. All I'm saying is, if you're gonna put wolf tone pickets in it, and you have a special one of a kind Gibson guitar that has some collectability to it, hold on to the original pickups. Anybody who's buying that as a collectible wants how it was. And you can swap them out and people will say, well, you took them out and put them back in. Whatever, that's, that's okay. But if you don't have the original pickups and you're putting in these modded pickups, well, all of a sudden now we don't have the same guitar now, do we? <laughs> right? From a collectible standpoint, right, we're going down, bro. Your so-called improvements aren't seen as such by a lot of people. They're like, well, no, I want the Gibson P90s. I don't care how weak you think they sound. That's what came in it, and that's what I want. So, again, it felt felt what we would call tainted. <laughs> exactly, Sal. Preserve, just preserve the original parts. He did that with the knobs, which is great. Yeah, that's the correct way to do it. If you want to mod it while well, you have it, no problem. But whole preserve the original part so you can just put it back to stock and say, oh, it's exactly like it came from Gibson. 
that makes her a more um, enticing offering to somebody who's buying it not to play, but to collect. Again, the same with the case and the case candy. So at the end of the day, uh oh, <laughs> wait. <laughs> Oh wait, that's not a good one. We gotta get a we gotta get a good cross here. There we go. Oh Gibson SG, we hardly knew ye. You were a satin copper, but you just didn't have enough to make gold. <laughs> Thanks, Vanilla Slice. Up to 85% of that is true. So, um, but, but like Speaker said, you know, they're making new guitars every day. <laughs> we'll, we'll find one. We'll find one. And it will be, um, it will have, it will check all the boxes. Okay. This checked a few boxes. Nice brand Gibson, nice guitar SG. It's a good looking guitar. I'm not gonna lie. It's, it's, I'm not gonna lie. it's a good looking guitar. You know, but it also uh, had some serious minuses, which was uh, the lack of case and provenance. Um, that's a uh, speaker holding it. in the store. That's a weird look purple, but it's it's not. It's just a reflection from some lights. And this was in there, what do you think? Would you hit that or not? Hit it, hit it or skip it? Um, these lines here are uh, reflections. I might tap that. Look at that. Yeah. Skip, yeah. Yeah, it's a carving. Mom always said, don't you go messing with no carvings. <laughs> uh, but th this is the floor, these lines here, right? This is the guitar next to, across from it. Reflect it's a bass reflecting back off of it. I'll tell you, you know, so it, it's a little, right? It doesn't have another uh, set of frets on the front of it. It's a... That was a good looking guitar. The problem is, is like, I, you know, I'd be interested in around seven or eight hundred bucks, but they wanted fifteen. And that's when I ran, ran fast. Never looked back. But there it is, this coppery copper in copper. Name it feel. Copper feel. <laughs> Hello, Oregon. What kind of pickups were on that green one? Uh, that was, uh, those are M22s, right? They had to be, right? 22, 22 pole pieces? Oh, yeah. M22s, bro. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven under there, eleven under there, and uh, times two. That's twenty-two. Let's carve an M twenty-twos, bro. Anyway, that was my lunch. Where is it? Right there. That was lunch. <laughs> Exactly, it's got it's got all the pole pieces. It got has all the pole pieces. Oh, the 
with you in the 80s, yeah. <laughs> So anyway, that was our SG. That was the SG saga. I felt like I needed to take more time early. That was I only took 15 minutes. Anyway. Uh, got it, left it, dropped it. And there you go. All right. Uh, the other thing was uh, Guitar Center, used guitars, 10% off. That's through, I think, the 31st? Uh, could be the end of the weekend, but if you they never put used guitars on sale. Right now, the, 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 the custom shops that were close to, like, the low threes and the high twos all went because they were, they were big drops. Drops so If it was 3100 it got dropped by $310. That was way down in the high twos. For these killer custom shop strats, all gone. They all flew right off the shelf. They had, um, and I was telling Speaker this when we were there, they had a Korg Nautilus. I've been following the Nautilus. They had one actually at that store we were going to for $13.89, which was normally $16.99. They had it on sale for $13.89. And with the extra 10% uh, off, it was $12.50. I had all I could do to keep from buying it. I was like, don't do it, bro. You don't need it. And I, you know, again, got to be careful because you wind up buying things just because it's a good deal, not because you, you need a new guitar. But, uh, yeah. Extra 10% off. That's pretty rare. That's pretty rare. Um, what else we got going on this week? New Vola. Pricing. So let's talk about the Volas for a, for, for a little bit here. A little bit. Uh, hold on. Oh, it's stuck on my foot. Oh, that's what it is. That's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing the foot, foot stuck. There it is. And what it is, I think it's. I swear to God, it's like this cable here. Yeah. It's like stuck on my. Where are you going right there, right, I'm gonna pull that over like this. Got it. Got it. All right. Cleaner. A little bit. A little bit. Here we go. Um. So you know, I I, I like the vol stuff. But I think the biggest, you know, knock to Vola is that, you know, even though they're, you know, a top quality made in Japan, you know, guitar, you know, I can't say exactly where they're made. I don't know exactly where they're made, but I suspect they're being made in the same factories that make some of the biggest name brands that you buy from Japan. You know, some of those brands, like big old brands that have been around very long time and make a lot of guitars out of Japan like those brands you know uh, the, the the difference is is that those brands have a brand name they have been around for a long they have been around for 60 years and Vola hasn't so Vola needed to get more competitive um, this uh, guitar you know was selling at I want to say seventeen eighty nine, which you know puts it competitive, like right around like an Ibanez AZ series, which is I think what they felt it was competing with. The problem is, is that Ibanez is the Ibanez brand, and so it's hard to compete with Ibanez, you know, with that sort of brand name. So um, they cut all their dealers. Vola has gone direct. There's no more dealer network, and the markups were pretty substantial. So um, now that the dealer network has been ended and it's direct, the prices have fallen. I would, I would quote it as considerable. They have fallen considerably. They have fallen considerably. This was seventeen eighty nine. It's now ten ninety nine. The um, 
other one I have here, the same thing. I want to say this is the same exact price. Um, again, MIJ, roasted neck, all that. These were $17.89. Again, they're, they're $10.99 now. And um, the... Uh, The one without the roasted maple, like just the regular neck, they, they skipped that roasting step. Those were $12.99. MIJ, made in factories where big famous names are also made. At least that's what my guess is. Hold on, I have something in my eye. Right, there we go. Um, it went from $12.99 to $8.39. 839 MIJ. I don't think anybody's doing MIJ. I got one of those on the way here. And I have a, a nicer, one of their more premium guitars on the way here, a signature model. And I'll break it all down when they get here, but they're they're dropping uh they're they they're dropping their prices pretty much across the board. Twenty ninety nine is now thirteen ninety nine. Uh things that were uh, seventeen eighty nine are now ten ninety nine. Things that were twelve ninety nine are now eight thirty nine, and everything is 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 dropping across the board. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. I had actually I have my notes right here. The Joss Allen J one was uh, two thousand ninety nine. It's now eleven ninety nine. Eleven ninety nine. I made a mistake. I thought it was thirteen. It's eleven ninety nine. <coughs> the ROV twenty four. That you just saw there in matte black, that was seventeen eighty nine. It's now ten ninety nine. <clears throat> the one here, the ROASFB, was seventeen eighty nine. These are with bag, <clears throat> not really a bag. It's with a soft case, kind of like the Gibson soft case. It's got walls. It's not a bag. It's got walls on the side. It's a soft case. Uh, ten ninety nine, and then the one that's uh, I should be getting in like in a week or two, the Oz V three CC, the classic neck. So they don't roast it, and um, in the in the Cobra Blue, it was twelve eighty nine. Now eight thirty nine. So again, very. Uh, I would call precipitous drops. To and I don't know that these prices will even last. I feel like that these are to sort of like make a splash with the new pricing and. You know, maybe eventually in 12 to 24 months, things will start to creep up. But I think for right now, for right now, those are the prices they're going with. And I thought they're, um, I thought they were really good. I mean, 839 for MIJ? I mean, come on. I think it just moved a bit, exactly. I think it moved. Yeah, you're talking between 30 to 50% off of the former pricing. Yeah, they're, they're trying, you know, I think on that, that lower one, it wasn't quite as heavy of a discount because they were already trying to discount it heavy to try to have a model that was at a certain price point. That's why it was at like $12.89. Um, but yeah, most of them are precipitous seven, 700 plus dollar, you know, price drops, you know, thousand dollar price drops. It's like crazy. So, um, yeah, I, I just check them out. They're going direct and there you go. And as a matter of fact, um, they're going to get me, we just, I'll have a video on it soon and they're going to get me a code that'll save you, I think an extra 5%. So uh, I'm just waiting on getting the code from them, and they'll uh, I'll hook you up with the code. So it'll even be an extra five percent off of, I think it's any purchase. So even an extra five—that's an extra forty bucks off that eight thirty-nine. You know, that's going to be like under under eight hundred bucks. It's going to be like seven ninety-nine. MIJ, brand new MIJ. People are talking. I, you know, I, I want to throw this out. There. I'm just saying. I just think MIJ are some of the greatest instruments made in the world. That's just my opinion.
Do they ship it to you for free? I don't know about that. I think it depends on where you are. Um... You know, that, that I'm not sure. Um, maybe, like, yes in certain parts of the world and no in other parts. I don't know. That you'd have to check out. PDX Freak showed Hotel California still so in the gone in seven minutes and he knew it. Yeah. Did they, did they, I, I caught that video. Did they kill it? Did they, did they knock his video out? They have uh, the, the Eagles have no sense of humor. That's, that's well known. This thing is pissing me off. I feel like it's, it's hitting something there, bro. It was gone so fast, was it really? Yeah. Exactly, this is the signature. My SIG model. Oop, wrong one. There you go. Yep. The SFB. It was limited edition, they may have already ended it. Yeah, I love, you know, I really love the back on this too. See the mahogany? It's like the most mahogany mahogany you've ever mahoganed. It's nice. With the roasted maple neck and the you got your lock uh, tuners, but they're, they're like vintage lock. How, how do they even do that? That's crazy. Steven Celtics coming back and winning this series? Sure. Why not? I will say this, though. Um, of It's rare. If, if there was ever going to be an 0-3 comeback in the NBA, it would be a 2-seed against an 8-seed. Right? The 8-seed miraculously goes up three games. But then the two seed reminds the eight seed, oh, you know, there's a reason why we're the two seed. Though the one seed was out in what, the first round, right? Bucks, over, over. But you never know. We're, uh, we're one loss away from our season being over. <laughs> How often do I change strings? Um, usually, once, if, certainly if a string breaks, I never just, like, change a single string. That's an indicator you need a whole new set. But a lot of times I'll, I'll be playing them and I can just feel on the string, like, that's not too bad. These are pretty recent. These aren't bad. But you get flat spots on the bottom from playing. The bottom of the frets get flattened out a little bit. And if you can run your hand up there and feel those flat spots, you're like, ah, I need a new set. The round has been worn out in these spots. And, uh, you know, they, you, you start to lose your intonation. And um, you can even get a, a winding break, which always sounds like a, you know, a buzzing fret. 
Um, so I, you know, I don't have like a set time where I say like, well, every couple of weeks, I, there was a time when I was only playing like one or two guitars. I was changing my strings like every friggin' three or four days. I was addicted to the sound of fresh strings, but that wear, that wears off. <laughs> This is the Mahogany Buddy Chambered. It is. It took a full kilogram off the prior model's weight. Over two pounds. Um, I uh, I had the black one. Remember that? That had the um, glow-in-the-dark paint. Right? The glow-in-the-dark uh, thing there. Um, this was the replacement. They both had the roasted maple neck. Uh, the big difference was is that that other one was a full kilogram heavier. And, man, you felt it. That thing was a, a heavy guitar to hold. Uh, this one's much lighter, much lighter, way easier. The only mod I made on this was I swapped out uh, this knob for an ultra-low friction. I hate high-friction knobs. They piss me off. Because I'm constantly wah, 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 like a ninja. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah. I still got the black volo. It's sitting right here. It's it's about uh, a foot away from my foot. You want me to switch to the? Want me to switch to the black one? I can switch to the black one. I just hadn't played this blue one in a while. Old blue. You know what? With its oldness and its blueness. Knobs, you need low friction. Dude, that's been true since the dawn of time. Remember the bump pow. So this is the classic neck, which is chunkier than the other one, but it's it's actually not that big of a neck. In fact, I always tell myself this neck is thicker than it is when I pick it. I pick it up, I go, hey, this neck isn't that bad at all. What am I? What are you talking about? Um, I guess the difference between this neck and the other one is this feels closer to like the Gibson SG, just a little bit, a little bit bigger rump on the back, a little bit, a little cheekier in the cheeks. Um, a little rumpier on the rump, but the, uh, that other one is closer to like the, the Les Paul classic, which is a smaller neck, you know, at least more consistently small throughout. Um, I want to say the difference front to back is either half a millimeter or a millimeter and they carve it slightly differently too. Uh, in fact, I want to say that the, the smaller carve has a little bit, bit, a little bit flatter in the back, and this is definitely rounded, a little more round. I love this neck. Every time Bobby plays this, he's like, you know, this is a really good feeling. I'm like, right? <laughs> like, I, I can't believe it. He goes, you know, it, it, it's it's very comfy. I'm like, I agree. It's, it's, got, it's got the comfort. It's got the cheekier rump, exactly. You know, I mean, not to throw the luthier talk out there. Are you guys ready for, um, I know, Rip Tina Turner, God. 
Uh, the only thing that's awesome is that I, I feel like she was living her best life in her final years. Um, she had a beautiful house, I think, on uh, in Switzerland, on um, in Zurich, on Lake Zurich, which must have been gorgeous, I'm sure. You know, um, if you've ever been to Switzerland, Switzerland is absolutely beautiful, and. Uh, Especially around Zurich. <laughs> I mean, please, around Lake Zurich. Jesus, I mean, you're talking some, some gorgeous friggin' countryside. And, you know, uh, the only thing that sucks is they, they, can't, they can't mention her without bringing up Ike, who is just such a colossal piece of shit, you know. She'll be remembered as a saint, and he'll be remembered as just a, just a big piece of shit. Because that's what he was. He, he just was. You know, he's one of those dudes who who kind of really had nothing glommed on to Tina and anything he got, he sort of got by using her. And when she finally dumped him, she had some of the best success of her entire life. That story, that story is not that uncommon. But uh, I loved that she had such a, you know, I lived through her big revival in the 80s. I remember, you know, Tina Turner was washed up. She was a has-been. You know, she's somebody from the 60s who died with, you know, laughing. And, and you know what I'm saying? It's like she, she was kind of over. And never really, never really recovered until she got rid of Ike, went on her own, and man came back on fire i mean that she had two albums in the 80s that were just she won some grammys and the other thing that sucked is you really you're gonna you're gonna put her in the rock and roll hall of fame with ike first and then finally like 20 years later you put her in by herself i mean come on again ike was garbage garbage <laughs> Exactly, in the Acid Queen, Mad Max. She was she was a fireman. That that she, Tina was just you know, that that was talent. See that, Tina was talent. Tina also sadly, you know, much like John Mellencamp, didn't realize that they had a new name until they saw the album cover of their first album, and she saw you know Tina Turner. And uh, he saw John Cougar and was like, who the hell is this? And they're like, that's you. <laughs> what? Like, they don't ask. They just do. Yeah, Private Dancer sold a gazillion records, yeah. Yeah, she had, you know, What's Love Got to Do With It, Simply the Best, you know. I mean, she had a string of hits in the 80s that really, that's the, that's the Tina Turner I remember. You know, my parents probably remember her more from the 60s, but not me. I don't remember Tina back then. She was over. Tina was one of those people that you saw from old videos of somebody who was on, you know, the Mike Douglas show or something. Or maybe, uh, like I said, like, you know, like laughing or something, you know, or some, you know, late 60s show. I don't really remember her. I, it, it's really not till the 80s when she's long past Ike, off on her own, and she's on fire. Fire! <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Jeff Beck played on that. That's right. And she, he, uh, he did it for her in exchange if she would sign his guitar. And she did it with a, she carved her name in the front of it, you know. And uh, so it wouldn't rub off. She 
carved her name right into the front of his Jackson. Oh God, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Argentina opened for the Rolling Stones in 69. Wow, there's a there's a show. You know? Yeah, you know, you're right. Um, she's the one that told Mick Jagger to start dancing on stage and jump around and make and do moves. She, that is absolutely correct. Yeah, he, in fact, he talked about that when he was paying tribute. He basically said that like he owed like his whole stage presence to her. Yeah, she was in her 40s when um, she had their biggest success, without a doubt. And thank God, without Ike. Fuck that dude. Rotten hell. Really was a douche. Deserves zero sympathy. Oh, exactly, uh, niece heard. No, no, he was, he was, he was a friggin', you know, he was a, a monster. You know, which is, uh, Again, why it, it's it kind of sucks to to even bring him up, you know, when he, you know, you know what I'm saying? She, he's the parasite that's like stuck to her, right? The tick that she can never quite pull off the side of her. Uh, you guys up for a little bit of trailer news? It's not a lot, but there is a little bit of trailer news. Is it, is it trailer news time? Trailer news! Trailer news! Trailer news! Trailer <laughs> we need a better segue than that. We'll work on it. Which cat was? Oh, that's our Henri. boots. Anybody, anybody else making it over there? <laughs> oh my god, last night so I had the window open and uh, Cutie goes running out of the window like ah! <laughs> like meow. I was like, oh why, what's up? And Henri doesn't I mean, he stays up there, kind of like frozen, kind of like looking. And um, I look up to the camera and I see off in the distance something big, like down the street. I all oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. So I hit the rewind, go back, and look, and it's a pretty good sized deer. Which I have never, I've been living here over 20 years. I've never seen a deer on the street. 
ever. And here he was, or she, cutting through my front lawn. Couldn't really see because it's so close to the bushes, right? So I got a little bit out of sight. And all of a sudden, all, on my driveway, across my driveway in my neighbor's driveway, and then went running down the street, this little tail, like this. That thing was tall. It was big. <laughs> I was like, no wonder, no wonder she ran. God, this thing is killing me. I feel like it's making like a non-stop noise. What's going on? What are we doing? What is this? Is this gonna make any difference? By pulling this. Hold on. Come on. Right Pull this off. It's pissing me off. All I can do is just hear this thing. What's that doing? Oh god, it's my All right. I, I don't know that that's going to be much better, but I just feel like I, I feel like that these these get so friggin' sensitive. I don't know what it is, but there's something about like this cable just starts to pick up every every little you know it like that's not too bad. There. I swear to God, it's almost like a break in the shielding. You see that where you're you're hearing me scrape a pick on it. On the cable. get down from the ceiling <laughs> I think that'd be even worse remember this it's a wired mic I think it's a little better I'm telling you right now it's a little better this was rubbing against some sort of other rubber item and the rubber on rubber you know that old thing you know rubber on rubber my my some of my dudes out there know what I'm talking about <laughs> All right, we ready for a little bit of trailer news? All right. Here we go. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Right there. There we go. So not a, not a lot happened this week, unfortunately. Um, I got tied up with other projects, but this is uh, late in the day today. I... Uh, was able to start getting the um, the lights on. So this is a back mounted light. It's a single shaft that comes out of the back. You don't mount it with two front screws. It's got a single uh, center mount in the back and then for a, a cable. And I also got the new um, the new uh, hold on a second here. I also got the new um, hitch. What do they call that? Ball, ball hitch, hitch ball, ball hitch ball. It's pretty much the same as the other one, except not as crappy. There we go. See, there's the other one right there. Yeah, it's in there. A little closer. Oh, we're getting there. Oh yeah, there it is. 
couple of photos, different angles. There's the front, there's the side. And then there it is on the inside. So you can see there's two holes. There's one hole right here, which it comes through with a single hole. And then here's the line that comes through that goes right there. And this will just, can, another line will come past this to go down to that side. And uh, it'll go there and, and, and link up with that. So eventually we will have the lights going. There they are. There and there. Looks like that. So a little bit, a little bit. I, uh, this hole was already drilled. And because um, this hole was already drilled, I just used its mounting placement and drilled a hole on the other side in the same exact mounting placement. Because it was a good placement and I, was, I just wanted to use the holes that were already in it. So, we'll get there. We're getting there. Oop, that's my... My video. Oh, we're, we are getting there. Little by little. And uh, I, I couldn't even, you know, I, I thought about finishing it up this week, but I, I, I feel like I'm probably going to try and get everything on it get the lights going and everything by like um you know monday or tuesday uh and then go up and get the wood and start getting the wood in by like uh maybe the end of this week uh because we're not going to have rain the whole the entire week uh we're in a we're in a dry pattern for at least seven days <laughs> Yeah, symmetry is pretty good, right? Not, not, not bad. That that kind of stuff, uh, admittedly, makes me mental. I literally like took down a whole section of um, like decorative fence on my house down because it wasn't aligned properly, and I, I, I literally couldn't look at it. I was like, no, no. <laughs> I went up there with like one of those. Uh, what are the, the, the rapid the rapid oscillating saws? Cut out all the nails. Zip, 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 zip. Pulled it out. Chopped the end off. Slid it down. Doop, 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 doop. There it is. Now I can live. <laughs> uh, we're getting there. We're getting there. <laughs> Uh, wood, marine grade plywood. Well, you get the pr the pressure treated, right? They infuse it with copper to keep it from bugs and uh, like rot. And uh, so I'm going to use the thickest uh, pressure treated plywood that they sell, which is three quarter inch plywood. Uh, I'll use that for the floor and the sides. And then, uh, but before I put it in, I'm probably, which is why I should go get it quickly. Because I think I want to take it and um, put it on a couple of saw hosses out in the backyard to um, to paint it, right? To get some stain and to, to stain them before I uh, install them. The floor, I don't care. care. The floor can just... I'll, but I probably will put on the floor boards before I put them in, I'll roll like deck treatment on it. And that gets into a whole weird area because, you know, you're not supposed to, like, really even paint or stain this stuff until, like, so many months it has to, like, dry out a little bit. So it gets into a weird area. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. I might just do the bottom of it, right, and let the top stay uncovered. That way I can mount it in there, let it breathe off for a little bit, right? Only do the outsides and the bottom. And the interior part, I can leave, like, open, like not, uh, what I want to say, untreated, unpainted. Uh, and let it dry. You know? What the hell am I hearing? I'm hearing something. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, you get the same way measuring drywall. Yeah, measure it 10 times. Oh, it makes you mental. Makes you absolutely mental. Yeah, I know the Eat It Joe's LEDs on the side. I need the, I need the full wraparound all connected together. <laughs> Oh, no way, Nelson. Look at you with the membership gifts. All right, we have to, we have to, uh, we have to induct our new members here. All right, that's two. That's two. No, we got to go lower. All right, we have Joe Hervey. We speak your name. <laughs> Skyprop. Welcome, we speak your name. Herb of Fireside Studios. Welcome, we speak your name. BC Rich, 581. We speak your name. And of course, Bryce Rigel. Welcome. I do really like this guitar. Joe Hervey, I'm back. <laughs> I'm back, baby. Speaking your name. Da -da -da -da. You know what I'm having a harder time doing? Moving the pick off to play with my fingers. I can do that without much problem, but getting the pick back up into my fingers, so my hands aren't as, they don't have the dexterity like they used to have. You know, it's like fumbling it just to get it back in the right position again. <laughs> Vanilla Slice, has it been three years with this? I feel like it could it could be three. I feel like it's two. But you might be right. It could be three. I feel like this is 2021, not 2020. Let's take a look here. Um, I'm going to go back to January of 20... Yeah, January of... 2021. I think that's when I get. I think I get a January of 2021. That sounds right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, here, there, there are the first picks I took of it. Age related. My playing thumb knuckle is after. Yeah, I can't hard pick anymore. Yeah, yeah. It's um. Yeah, you, you, it's hard. It's hard to move the, the just a little pick around my hand. You know, it, it's you know. So I'll I'll put it like under here, right? And I'm, and I'm playing. You know, using the fingers to play. But now to get the pick back up into my fingers again, that this become that's become a little tricky. <laughs> Tight. 
What the hell happened? No, you're getting old. <laughs> hey, damn it. God effing damn it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, what do you know? There's my, there's my thumbnail. Nice hair, bro. Oh, you can tell I'm a year into a pandemic in that one. A little bit chubbier in the cheek, a little bit longer in the hair. same issue going back from finger picking to the pick yeah right it's like what the hell happened <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you <laughs> what's your problem what's your problem oh yeah oh yeah right stone remember when stoner shark made a debut what's up dudes <laughs> i think that, that might have been the that might have been the thumbnail Great ref. Thanks, Terry.
I do like this guitar. Seven. like that solo you know that in and I know this is going to come out of left field but um, uh, the John Paul Jones keyboard solo to all of my love it's poetry it's pure poetry I, I gotta learn that on guitar because it's just so good one of my favorite keyboard solos ever it's just they like not a wasted note just so perfect <laughs> you yeah, have perfect pitch or relative pitch hell no i got no pitch i'm really bad la 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 wait la 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 wait la la yeah, yeah. No, it's uh, it's pretty bad. It's pretty it's pretty bad. But what what does happen is that when you listen to something, you know, a hundred billion times over fifty years, eventually you get it. Admittedly, it, it took until like the forty seventh or forty eighth year. <laughs> That's that's gravitas, bro. <laughs> Remember that? We were always gonna start Sadlands, right? The guitar that only plays minor chords. <laughs> Seven to nine, heat winning. Oh my god, it's all over. Call it a game. Pack it up, boys. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. One of those. It's in there somewhere. There are two cats in the window. See? See that cat tail? You got one cat right there. And you got one cat right there. That's a cat tail. That's a cat tail. <laughs> With no cow cat though. Cow cat left. <laughs> All the notes on the guitar everyone but this one no idea someday that's 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 my mount everest right there this one someday i'm gonna figure out what the hell that note is scientists are baffled You're gonna buy a ball like that guitar. You know what? Yeah, but dude, hold up, hold up. Let me get you a code. Let me get you a code. I'll get you a code, and you'll save an extra at least five percent. You know, the Volas are on. They're not on sale. They've they eliminated their dealer network because they can't compete if they have a big dealer markup. They wanted to start. They wanted to go old school. They wanted to do a big dealer network, and what they're really realizing is most of their dealers were selling most of their guitars online. So what are we doing here? <laughs> if like if more than half the stores are selling more than half their guitars through Reverb, what are we doing here? And they were like, "Listen, we we tried it. We wanted to do dealers. We wanted to have that, but we're ending it. They ended all their dealers. There's no more dealers, and whatever stock they have, they're blowing out." And, but it's still way more, the, even their blowing out is way more than um, what you can get it from Vola Direct now. And now it's all Vola Direct. When you go to Vola, there's a way, when you look at the guitar, just to add it to your friggin' cart and check out. So, uh, the only thing is, is I think I'm going to have a code in the next week or two. And I'll have that code, that'll give you an extra 5%. Because, you know, for as much money as you're saving, I'd trade it all to save a little more. <laughs> Right? Oh, yes, yes, I'm quite wealthy. But you know what? Trade it all for a little more. The only thing you don't need... The only thing you need the middle pickup for, though, is the... Um, there is a certain... When you, when you use it, um, not by itself, but with the neck... Or if you use it in the bridge and you have the bridge in the humbucky and the, and the single coil mode. That's the single coil. That's the double coil. Single coil. Single coil. Double coil. 
That was double coil. Single coil. It's a really strong difference between the double and the single. They need to make the Oz JRM 24 fret normal headstock. Well, the one I'm getting, the Green Mini, is a 22 fret normal headstock. I told them I didn't want all reverse headstocks. That some people just they don't they don't want reverse headstocks. So they the one they're sending me, but it is a 22 fret. It's doing 22 frets on that because they consider that the reverse headstock is like the modern. So they do the stainless steel and they do the, you know, especially in that other one. That's uh, that one over there is like their, you know, their rocker, you know, their shredder guitar. So the thinner neck, the stainless steel frets and, you know, reverse headstock. But I'm with you. You know, it's like and I go in and out on reverse headstocks. I, I do think that they do look kind of sleek. There is sort of a certain look. You know, they've sort of grown on me. I, I was really against them when I first got them. I wasn't a big fan of them, but they've kind of grown on me a little bit. But um, the one I have coming is a regular headstock. I say, can we just do a regular headstock? And they said, we can. So they're sending me, I think, a Joss Allen, which is a reverse headstock. And then I think the Oz CC, which is the classic carve, and that's going to have the regular headstock, not the modern carve, which is the uh, reverse headstock. So. <laughs> Gotta go scat, cat scratch fever now. New positive grid update for what for which product for the Spark? I have not tried it, um, or is it for one of their software products? Uh, Steve, how is the neck dive on speakers almost as she? You know, we never tried it with a strap. Um, we never got that far, but I will say this: I thought the action was kind of high on it. And I said, well, maybe it just needs a, you know, the truss rod to be cranked down a little bit. That's very common. It works its way out. People never check that. And all of a sudden, I don't know why my action's so high. It's because your your neck is bowed forward and you're gonna crank down your truss rod a little bit. But it was already pretty straight. So I'm like, oh well, if the neck if the if the neck is pretty straight, then we then I, now you have to start lowering the the bridge. And who knows if they were already down at the bottom of the you know of the screw. I don't know. I'd have to you know spend a little time with it. To see if what the working parameters were for it, but I wasn't getting a warm, fuzzy feeling that it was going to be an easy guitar to work with. You know, the more we looked at it, um, again, I think, I think if it had the case and all the case candy, um, including all the provenance, I, I, I think might have kept it because, admittedly, twelve ninety nine is a great price. You know, they just did another mod shop run. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So check this out. This is this is where you, you get the mods now, the color mods anyway. They might do other mods on Reverb, but if you want real, like, straight-up mods, you got to go here to the Gibson website. And most of them, when you click on them, like this one here, 2099 burnt orange metallic you're like wow that looks an awful lot like that copper one except it's gloss notify me when in stock it's never going to be in stock it's a one-off this didn't say this just said add to cart a couple of days ago but it's gone and it's never coming back and it's a one of a kind so it's it's pretty much sold but the, the difference between this and the copper one we had the other day that's a gloss finish and i like the tuners better but it's almost, it's $800 more than what that used one was. But it comes with a case and all the case candy and the provenance. 
Oh, we can go back and forth all night. Yeah, I think I like these tuners better than that other one, too. But again, you know, it's not like it's an inexpensive guitar. It's still 2100 bucks. <laughs> Anyone following the game? How's my, how's my, uh, how's my team doing? <laughs> Did you see, um, well, I haven't seen the, I haven't seen the cow cat. You seen the cow cat in there? I haven't seen, I haven't seen, we call her sweetie, but that's a bit of a misnomer. You, you guys ever see Babe? You know the cat that goes, they call it pork. That's that cat. <laughs> yeah, humans eat pigs. They call it pork. <laughs> That, that reminds me of Sweetie. <laughs> oh, 66 Chevy Caprice, butternut yellow. I think I know that color. Right, it has a hint of green. Would look good on the trailer with that uh, black wood. Celtics 26, Miami 20. So if the Celtics pull it off tonight and they even the series 3 3, I gotta think the momentum is favoring the Celtics at that point. <laughs> What was the first rift you, I learned on, the, on an electric guitar? That's one of the first. Yeah, that was, but of course we played it. <laughs> this is how we mostly played it. That was. That's, that's the difference between what you hear and what you're acting, right? I remember when we heard it, we were like, yeah, man, it sounds just like it. <laughs> Ace of Spades was more like the Joker. Happy Memorial Day. Well, that sounds a little weird. Steve plus Vola equals awesome playing. You know what? Not going to lie. I'm a big fan of the single, single, double. I, 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 I really do like a single, single, double over a, over a, you know, 
double humbucker. Uh, there's just something about the single coil that is um, in the neck that, uh, you know, is a certain a je ne sais quoi. Stainless on the frets, not on this one, because this is the CC, which is the classic, um, so it's nickel. But if you get the MC, which is the modern, it will have stainless. It just depends on what they, what their, um, the kind of, the kind of vibe they're going for. Uh, on the classic, they go with the nickel frets. On the um, moderns, they go with the stainless frets. And 24 frets versus 22. That's another thing with the modern versus the classic. Two, you, you get two, that's two better now, isn't it? What about a double single double? Uh, yeah, I guess, but sometimes I there's some see the, there's that there's just something about that single coil on that low volume. I don't know, it, 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 it's this thing. It's a certain thing, you know. Yeah, is the black the modern? Yeah, the black's the modern. And I got two more, like I said, I should have two more coming that are... So that's the modern. Right. A little bit different neck calf. These are ten ninety nine now. Oi, God, I can't hold two guitars at once. Oi, 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 oi. Get over there. Got it. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, I'll have a I'll have a regular with the classic neck. I'm gonna get a jaw sound here and then um the, uh, I think the Joss Allen is a blem. He's like, hey, you want a Joss Allen? He goes, I got a blem here. I said, yeah, I'll take it. You know, he's like, you know, he goes, if you can clean up the blem. Um, I think the pickup might have a, a little bit of a damage to it. Someone damaged one of the pickups. So maybe I'll spray paint it or something like that. I'll fix it. You know, those are the kind of blems I like. Oh, yeah, I'll just rip the pickup out and put a new one in, but I think they want me to keep the pickup in it for demo purposes, so I might just spray paint it, you know. Notice the difference with the sound of the modern? Yes, it's brighter. It's brighter. Without a doubt, it's brighter. I don't think the pickups are different. I'd have to double-check with Vola. I think it's the same humbucker, but... Um, I think it's the stainless frets. I think the stainless frets, you know, when they touch the strings, they you it because they aren't as soft as nickel, they don't absorb some of those ultra high frequencies as readily. And you know, they let those high frequencies ring out a little better. So it sound the result is it sounds brighter. Right. But you know, I, I don't know. I think I like the sound of this better. I think there is a certain you know, uh, sound to the nickel frets. That's just it's it's the right balance. It's, it's I think it's more balanced. I think the stainless frets that I play, I feel like they're a little bit you know high end shifted with the tone. But yeah, no, the hardness of the frets absolutely brightens up the sound because the softer the fret, the more it'll absorb a little bit. Without a doubt. You know, throw some lead frets in it, see how they sound. I'll bet the note would choke right out. All right? The great thing about stainless steel, too, is that uh, they're kind of slippery. A little, little bit. Again, that, that hardness of the metal makes it more a little more slippery versus the, um, right, it's a tighter matrix versus the... Uh, uh, the nickel, which is again a little softer, which is why they wear down, and you know, they just they're softer metal. Period. Exactly. We need the depleted uranium frets. Ron says, "I think I actually prefer nickel." Yeah, I might be with you, Ron. I think I do too. Having played now, gone back and forth between the two, 
And it could just be that I'm just used to nickel, right? We're just older and we're, you played nickel frets our whole life. And now you hear the stainless and you're like, well, that doesn't sound right. It sounds a little too bright. Um, but I don't know. They are, they are a little brighter. I've noticed that consistently with my stainless versus, you know, non-stainless versus nickel. All right, dudes. Boston 34 MIA 29. All right, it's time for me to go make a coffee and uh, turn on the TV right there <laughs> and watch the rest of this game. Have a wonderful uh, week, a wonderful night, wonderful week. Uh, thanks to everybody for hanging out tonight. Super extra special thanks to anyone who contributed, uh, especially Nelson, who uh, was very generous with those uh, monthly uh, memberships. That's uh, super appreciated. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, BroFist to my mod squad. Hashtag mo BroFist, hashtag mod squad. And we will do it all again a week from tonight. And maybe, maybe I'll have those volas here by then. And uh, I can we can go over... Uh, the, the the new the new one. I'm hoping the Volo will get here maybe by midweek, and I can actually shoot a video with it. And get, but uh, if not, I'll, you know, maybe, maybe I'll have it a week from tonight, and I can actually just break it out and just show you. You know what I have? Uh, again, that just hold on. That Joss Allen one does have a cosmetic flaw, uh, which is why they're sending it to me. So whatever. There you go. All right, dudes. No, you rock. We'll see you in a week at the very least, maybe sooner, never know. Could happen, but no promises. All right, no, you rock. Have a wonderful Memorial Day weekend if you're in the States. And I think it's a banking holiday in uh, at the very least the uh, UK, if not Europe. So everyone have a great weekend and a great week. And we'll do it all a week from tonight. And there you have it. And no, you rock. All right, dudes. Have a good one. And we'll see you next time. And rock on. Later. <laughs>